Rick, it is a pleasure <laughs> to talk to you, and I look forward and hope we don't laugh our way through <laughs> two hours, but that will be good too, because theater is about fun, and friendship is about yep. fun. I want to start off with a part that you played that I always wanted to play in my life. You know how actors have lists of what they would like to play? Oh, yes, bucket and list. I never got to play that one, and you did. So not only am I going to express my jealousy here, but I want to ask you about the part. It was Edgar in nice. King Lear. So tell me a little bit about Edgar, the part I always wanted to play. Well, I would have loved to see you play it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, probably the most challenging role for a young actor. And I think I was about 27, 28 when I did it. Um, I did it twice. The first time was at the Citadel in Edmonton, and Len Cario was, uh, was Lear. And he was probably the best Lear I've ever seen. Um, I wanted to do the role because it was like the ultimate challenge an actor could have. It demands that you disappear as an actor. Uh, any trace of ego, vanity, or anything related to your, who you think you are has to dissolve, it has to disappear. Because this is a man that's basically trying to escape from this world, to protect his life. And if you can achieve that, which seems almost impossible, but if you can venture into that territory of anonymity and loss, no character, then you're achieving the role. And uh, the second time I did it, John Hirsch, who we talked about earlier, said that to me. He said, this character will only work if you, the actor, disappear. And so it was like verification from the first time I'd done it to the second time with him. It's a brilliant role. I think it's... Um, it demands just every particle of your stamina, strength, ability to make it work. And why do you say it's a difficult role for a young actor? Because of what it demands of the actor. Um, it demands that you have a maturity of spirit or the old soul. You have to be at your physical best to do that role because everything about that man is transitional. He's trying to change every aspect of his being. He's basically trying to shift his soul, if he can, in order to hide. He's also changing his physicality. Uh, he becomes mad. Because he goes mad, mad right? He, he, he pretends to go mad, yeah. He but eventually hides, he, does. he flees the yeah. court, and then he pretends to be Mad Tom. Yeah. And then he reappears as a third person, right? As the as the, to challenge his brother to a duel and he hides himself until mm -hmm. the fight, right? So it is, it's about changing your appearance of identity all the time. He does it four times too with Gloucester, he's, he's with his father too. Right. Yeah, you know, when he right. says, you know, you've fallen from a height, father. And he uses that phrase, but it's as if another person is saying it. He's become another character at that point too. Yeah, because uh, us as mature actors, we'll take that with a grain of salt on my part, <laughs> but as mature actors, we see the levels in that part very easily yeah. and understand the kind of the complex artistry of what is written there. But we're talking about the young actor, which you were 27, and when I wanted to play it, I was probably 27, yeah. who maybe don't have developed all those sensory layers of how you play. Yeah, but they also you need a, man, a young man's body to actually physically do the part. It's a very, it's, it's, it's ultimately the most demanding role, I think, for a young actor. And I know I didn't come anywhere near where it needed to be. Um, oh, come on. No, no, seriously. Oh, I, come on. No, no. I, How do you know that? Is that Rick crit criticizing himself? Well, we all have benchmarks within, our, within ourselves. Right. You know, and I, I think maybe I got about 50% of the way. I got as far as I could because I wasn't mature then. If I could go back now with my own mind and experience to that time, it would have been a different performance. But I would have needed that young body, my own young body, to have done it. It's a physically draining, taxing piece. The mad scenes, the fight, the what? What is the... Everything. Everything. Like, you consider when this character starts off, he's the most gullible person in the world. Within a page and a half, his brother has convinced him 
that his father doesn't love him anymore and they're coming after him. It's a page and a half. You know, and it also, you know, it suggests how much love was there for the brother, the bastard Edmund, and you wonder what kind of uh, mind would propel him to go and adopt this character of Mad Tom in order to survive. And he does. And what did you conclude that he, where did that come from in Edgar, that he think, well, I'll turn into a pretend mad person? Well, I, I think that he thought of the, the lowest um, type of person he could be, the lowest, uh, most unrecognizable, the least suspected, and probably the antithesis of his nature. He came from a wealthy family. You know, he, he was, he, he, you know, it, it wasn't a poor family, and he chose a character that was ultimately just above earth scum right. to hide. It was such a drastic um, disguise that he needed, that much he knew. And in that wonderful speech at the beginning, is, I'll, I'll become mad. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw everything that I've ever known away. My sense and essence of self is gone to be that character, to hide in order to survive. And I think ultimately there is another part of him that wanted to disguise because he could come back that way. If he disguised and played the role well enough, if he got into his madness so well, he could come back. And you know what? Because I, I don't think he ever lost his father's love. I mean, his love for his father. And I think there was always a, an avenue of return in his nature. And that's why he chose that disguise. To go as far away as you can to return. And it's strange, the last play he just did was, uh, that theme was involved uh, in the play as well. Um, becoming someone else so you can return to your hometown. You mean return to self, return to family, to return to father, return Not to, to return to self, to be close to what you had as a child. So that people wouldn't recognize you. would be surrounded by people who had grown up in the community and you would return as another character that they wouldn't recognize. So you could still be within the community but not as connected as you were before. It was just important to be in that milieu. And yeah. I think that that's strange enough. I hadn't thought that that connection to Edgar was there, and it is. Because you have to be able, if you can disappear, you can return. So looking back on the part, Edgar, that you played twice, mm -hmm. um, you say now that you perhaps got 50% of what was there. Yeah. That is the mature artist speaking. Did the 27-year-old Rick McMillan know that? Yes. Yes, there was part of me that couldn't reach the depth that I felt I needed. I was aware that it where it was, but I didn't know how to attain it. Because you can't, you can't bring experience from the future back to you. You have to deal with the experience that you have, the level of experience you have. But you can you know that you could, you, you know where it should go, but you can't get there. But you had the wit and sensibility to know that there was all that to get to. Yeah, I think most actors have that intuition. No, Rick McMillan, most actors don't have that. That's pretty special. Oh, I don't think so. But I think that's, it's, it's frustrating because you know where you, where you should be, or at least you can, you know, once you, you know the distance between right. where you should be and where you are. 